All right, ladies and gentlemen, fellow coders, welcome to this next episode where we're going to be diving into the database schema that we sort of penciled out here and, uh, and establishing relationships uh, between them uh, in terms of what other properties are, these things should hold and so on and so forth. Uh, if you haven't already watched any of the previous videos here, you might be very confused by this video. Please go back and watch uh, the earlier videos in my series. Don't forget to also subscribe so that you see all the future ones uh, coming down the pike, pike, pipe, pipe. Who knows? Um, I think it's coming down the pike is the expression. Uh, okay, so we're diving into the Fresh Votes app and uh, and the requirements in terms of the uh, database schema that we've sort of uh, outlined. We've gone through already our nouns that we had talked about in the previous. I should have to check that one off in the previous video, and we've sort of created our database tables. But we did not insert any other properties or um, uh, what we call it uh, relationship information between these tables. I forgot to mention the users table uh, should have a user name, uh, user name, uh, probably a password and maybe even a name in terms of the person's name who's going to be, um, you know, the, the actual user's name itself. Okay, so those are some properties that are just always there when it comes to user uh, tables and whatnot. Uh, but now let's get into the actual uh, relationships between these tables. So I briefly mentioned users to vote to features and users to comment to features, right? Uh, in terms of relationships, and I talked about why we have these two other tables that are join tables. Um, and, and their purpose, but we don't have any information in here in terms of relationship information. So what do I mean by relationship information? Well, we need to have IDs for these tables, right? Each of these tables uh, needs to have some sort of an ID. Um, so this represents a primary key. This represents a, 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 how do we uniquely identify one row of data? That's always one of the most important, well, I shouldn't say one of the most, probably the most important thing when it comes to database design is there needs to be a way to uniquely identify every single row in every single table, period. End of discussion. In other words, every single table needs a primary key. Okay, how can you how can you say with this information, I'm able to get one exactly one row of data back from from the uh, database table? That's typically a an ID. Okay, this is why people have social security numbers, social insurance numbers. Uh, you know. Um, driver's license numbers, although those might not, I think a driver's license number should be unique. Um, anyway, some sort of medical insurance numbers. Every, every provider, every service, every business out there, uh, whether it's, you know, private or government, public, uh, they all have unique identifiers for each individual um, who is uh, partaking in their services. So, no different here. We need an ID for our uh, tables. But what about these guys? I didn't write the word ID in these guys, in the join tables. What gives, right? Well, they're not, the join tables don't have a single, um, uh, what should we call it, uh, piece of data, a single column that uniquely identifies them, okay? It's actually something called a composite key. It's made up of two or more uh, columns that make up the primary key, so to speak. Okay, it's called a composite key. So you have two different things that when combined, you're able to uniquely identify a row. Now remember, I said you have to uniquely identify a row. I never said that you need to uniquely identify a row with just one column. Okay, you can use multiple columns to uniquely identify a row. It's just called a key. A composite key in this case is multiple uh, columns together to identify one row of data. That's called a composite key. Uh, a primary key uh, with just the ID, that's one piece of, that's one column. One ID column represents the primary key. In this case, we're doing, we're doing a composite key. So what is the composite key for the vote table? How do we uniquely identify one row of data in the vote table? Well, a user places a vote, okay? I, I log into the system, I, Trevor Page, log in and I place a vote for what? For a feature. I vote for a feature. Oh, look at that. I vote for a feature. See my fingers, ladies and gentlemen? See the pattern that we're drawing here? This is a relationship. So the relationship comes into the vote table. In other words, a one-to-many relationship. How do we represent a one-to-many relationship? Well, the one side doesn't do anything. The many side holds the foreign key that points back to the parent table. So the user ID goes into that table via a one-to-many relationship. 
Cool. Okay. Well, what about feature to vote? Remember, user votes for a feature. Well, same thing. The feature, it's one to many. Um, one feature can have many votes on it, right? You can't just vote. One feature just can't have one vote. So, I, you know, hey, I have one, either one up vote or one down vote, and that's it. Well, it doesn't make sense, right? A feature has many votes that can be associated to it. So, how do we do that? Well, again, one to many. One feature has many votes. The one table does not do anything in terms of the relationship. It the, the burden of carrying the relationship information is placed onto the vote table, the child table, via the foreign key, feature ID. Okay, therefore, boom, ba boom, ba boom, one to many. Okay, and don't be confused by the fact that this is called ID and this is called feature ID. And like, well, when should I call it ID and when should I call it feature ID? There's no real. I mean, I prefer to do it this way, where a table, uh, the ID, the name of the column is just ID, um, because it, it just looks nicer in the code. When you get get to the code level, you're typing feature dot get ID, okay? That just looks nice to me. Feature.getID, it's very obvious feature ID, there you go. Um, some people prefer to write feature ID here. So the feature table has a feature ID, which is the primary key of the table. So instead of calling it ID, it's called feature ID here. But then when it goes to coding time, then you're typing feature.get feature ID, which just seems like more typing and it kind of is, you know. So just, it's like saying 5 a.m. in the morning. Right? Well, yeah, a.m. already told us that it was the morning. You don't need to say in the morning when you said a.m. That's the whole point, right? So it just kind of, it's redundant in my opinion. So that's why I choose to, to call it ID and not feature ID here. Uh, whereas here, you absolutely need to call it feature ID because this is the vote table. So if we said vote ID, we'd have like ID and ID. And what the heck is the difference between ID and ID? That would not work. That's why we have to be a lot more specific here. Okay, this is why we need to say in the morning or in the afternoon or, or a.m. or p.m., right? You need to tell it what's going on. So that's why we call it feature ID here, but ID here. So, but like I said, there's no, it, it's not the end of the world if you call it feature ID here and user ID here. Not the end of the world, okay? I'm not going to dock you points or anything. So, okay, what about the other way? So, again, comments, features, users, same kind of thing. A user leaves a comment on a feature. So this is the exact same thing that we're talking about. Um, same thing, just flipped over here. So we have a user ID. We have a feature ID. And we have relationships, relationship information um, joining the two. So uh, is that right? Yeah, many, many, one, one. So that is it for our relationships, right? So essentially, there's, there's, you have to, okay, there's so many things going through my head right now. So the, the uh, process to identify relationships, first of all, you look at the one table and you look at all the other tables and say, is there a relationship here? Is there a relationship here? Is there a relationship here? So you can start by looking at users and saying, is there a relationship between users and vote? Well, yes, there is. We've already identified it. Is there a relationship between users and feature directly? Well, no, there's no direct in terms of tables here, but it's indirectly uh, already a relationship via the external vote table. So users and vote, there's a relationship, one to many. Users to feature, there's already a relationship via this table, which is many to many. Is there a relationship between users and comment? Yes, there is, it's one to many. And then same thing here, you know. So that's where, okay, we're done with users. And then you can sort of do, sort of do the same thing with feature. And, and I mean, you go through each of the tables and, and look for relationships between all the tables to see if that, what's going on. Um, and, and that's sort of how you walk your way through it. This database design is fairly simple. So um, there's not a whole lot going on. So we don't really need to go through all these different iterations and whatnot, because we already have the main tables are already, they already have relationships between them and it's defined by the two join tables, so we're done. Really, there's only two main tables, users and features, and that's really it in terms of hardcore you know, feature uh, tables themselves. These other tables just represent a relationship between the two with carrying some additional information, right? So the comment table carries the text information that also carries a relationship information. And the vote table carries the upvote information with the relationship information as well. So then, okay, finally, as an experienced programmer, I look at this table design and I say, well, hold on a second. If they're both carrying the exact same 
relationship information. In other words, if this is a many-to-many -many and this is a many-to-many, -many, we have a user ID and a feature ID and a user ID and a feature ID and they're just joining, why the heck don't we just combine those two tables together? Why don't we have the comment table and a vote table combine together with the um, relationship information and then we just put text and vote and our text and upvote into the one combined table? Why don't we do that, right? Well, here's the catch. If this is this is how you do the the the, the analysis. Does a because if you did that, if you combine the two tables, if comment and vote were combined, that sort of implies that in order to do a vote, in order to upvote or downvote, you have to leave a comment, or in order to leave a comment, you have to have an upvote or downvote. Is that the case? Do you have to leave an upvote or a downvote when you comment? Well, some people on Reddit would say yes. <laughs> that's just you know good manners. If you're leaving a comment, you should upvote my my post. Um, but that's not the case for our software. The software that I'm building, if you want to leave a comment, that's fine. You're commenting on someone else's feature. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to upvote or downvote that feature. It might mean that you will, but you don't have to. And that's what would be implied if you combine these two tables together. You'd be implying that you have to uh, leave an upvote and leave a comment at the same time. Otherwise, you'd have nulls, right? You'd have a you'd have an upvote. So let's say someone upvoted, right? And then let's say we combine those two tables together. Someone upvotes or downvotes, right? So you'd you'd, you'd put that uh, a new row into this combined table, but then the comment will be null, right? And the whole point of database design is you want to try to get rid of nulls. You don't want to have you don't want to be storing nulls because then you're just wasting space. Right? So like I said, remember, uh, I think it was last video I said, or the video before that, I forget. There's no perfect design here. There are many solutions. There is a solution where we could co co combine these two tables together. I might decide to do that in the future, who knows? But the downside of doing that if we combine the two is we're kind of wasting space because we're gonna be storing nulls and I don't necessarily wanna do that. I mean, sometimes we won't. Sometimes someone will upvote or downvote while also leaving a comment, in which case that's beautiful. Okay, if that was the case, if everyone had to, always leave a comment with an upvote or a downvote or vice versa, then that would be the database design. We would combine those two, these two tables together. Um, that's just not the design I wanna, I, I wanna have, right? Um, so you can see how business decisions, logic decisions will change the database design, right? Now, either one would work. I, neither one is perfect. So, you know, you, you could even design it to have these two tables together and call it the comment vote table. Right, which which has a relationship between users and features as a many to many. Um, you could do that if that's what you wanted to. So just just letting just airing that dirty laundry out, saying out loud, maybe what probably some people will say in the comments below. Um, you know, that's just the way it is when it comes to design. There's no one perfect solution. Everyone has their own opinions. It's almost like politics drives me crazy, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, I, I want to stay away from politics here as much as we can in terms of uh, who thinks they have the better solution, because uh, that's, that's just not the real world. You can argue your case and, and then we can choose to go with it or we can choose to ignore it and just move on with our lives. And that's just the real world. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. All right, cool. So there you go. There's the database design. We're going to move forward with this one into the next video where we're actually going to be building this out in code finally. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button below if you're watching this on YouTube or some other uh, platform that allows you to like and subscribe. Um, one, it's going to allow you to see the future videos coming out. And two, obviously, it's going to help support the channel and uh, keep this content free and coming to you. All right. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, fellow coders, take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.